Good morning, everybody. This is Eureka John, and you are at Eureka Street Crypto Hub, broadcasting live on float.app. And um, it's F L O T E dot app. <clears throat> and I also put this up on YouTube, BitChute, and Odyssey every single day. And this is my just daily video blog, my morning show. That's all it is. And uh, I come on every single morning and talk a little bit about crypto and just things that I've learned on a day-to-day -day basis. That's all it is. It's me just publicly documenting my journey um, through this crypto space, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, and there's been plenty of it all. And uh, I'm 200 and what? 288 episodes deep now. And I've been doing this since October 24th, 2020. Um, and then every single morning since February 6th, 2021, I have not missed a single morning since then, um, at the beginning, after October 24th, I was just trying to find my rhythm, when was a good time, and all that stuff. <clears throat> um, I was broadcasting on Theta TV. I've been having some issues with that. And so I've decided to switch over here to Float. And uh, and it's treated me well. The stream works good. Um, the platform seems good. It's an uncensorable platform. They don't censor anything. And I like that. And they are Bitcoin compatible. And uh, they're working on decentralization i don't know i think it'd be cool to have the people from float come on here and just really kind of explain their roadmap and what they're doing but i believe they're on the process uh on the path towards decentralization um a lot of people criticize centralization there is a time and place for centralization in certain projects and um and especially whenever you're trying to get a project kicked off i think centralization is probably a good idea to make sure that you uh um, have the project going in the direction you want it to go before you fully automate it and get it out there. Uh, anyway, yeah, so that's what I do. I just talk about a little bit about crypto every single day, and it's my day-to-day -day opinion. So I'm not your financial advisor. I'm not your teacher. I'm not trying to be an instructor or anything. I'm just figuring stuff out as I go along, and I'm making it public. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, well, you yeah. know, that being said... I have said a lot of uh, cockamamie stuff on here um, that was just wrong, and I've also done some, made some pretty accurate predictions, and uh, um, you know I've come out pretty well on some things too. So yeah, take it for what it is. All right, so let's go over here to Coin Gecko. Let's see what's going on with the market. I haven't even looked at Coin Gecko since yesterday, so uh, since yesterday afternoon, um, which is a long time for me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so uh, Bitcoin is at fifty four thousand. Wow. Okay. Um, I actually went to bed super early last night, like eight o'clock, you know, I got a couple of little kids and whoo, man, you start putting them to bed and like you're, you're tucking them in, you're standing there by their bed and you just start falling asleep. And, uh, you're just like, man, I, I, I want to go back downstairs and work, but I'm so tired. Yeah. So that's why I get up super early so I can have my time to do this stuff because, uh, I wake up anyway now at that time. So <laughs> And this is the house is quiet, no kids, you know, no work, nobody's bothering me. And I do have to commute down to work, and that's an hour there and an hour back, which is getting really old. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm busy all day being a husband, being an employee, being a friend, being a coworker, all this other stuff, and uh, being a dad. And so this is my time to just be me. Yeah. So all right, and uh, you get to see this time. Okay, so Bitcoin, $54,051.20, up 29.9% in the past week, um, up 5.2% in the past 24 hours. Ethereum, 5.1%, up 24.6% in the past week. Cardano, 6.7%. I still have Cardano stuck on Atomic Wallet. And um, they say that, you know, no other wallets i can't export into any other wallet uh that because i have an nft bundled up and stuck in there with it and it and i want to honestly i kind of just want to sell my cardano i just I, i'm over it um yeah and i'm sorry cardano heads i know that you love your cardano and uh but it's just yeah i just um i i want to focus on on some specific projects and cardano is not really one of them but uh, i can't sell it anyway so either way I'm, I'm forced to hodl so maybe that might end up being a good thing um <laughs> i don't know uh, so until they figure out atomic wallet figures out how to work with nfts in their wallet uh it's indefinitely stuck in there and um you know so hopefully cardano continues to grow and develop 
and it forces Atomic Wallet to innovate. I should never have transferred anything into Atomic Wallet in the first place, but uh, I was just going to exchange out of it a while back. Um, and, uh, well, you know, I'm stuck hodling, so, all right. <laughs> Maybe I'll, I'll um, look back one day and be like, man, I'm so glad I didn't sell at 230 when Cardano's worth like 10 or $20 a token, so I don't know. Uh, so Tether's at a dollar. Binance Coin's at 442.28, um, up 20%. XRP, dollar eight, um, and that's up 15.8%, up 3.7%. Um, Solana, and when's XRP gonna, when, when's that Spark Flare, Spark token from the Flare project gonna happen? They, they said it was supposed to happen last January or some, then the last spring. And then, you know, oh, they keep pushing it out. And then I hear it's gonna be happening this fall. I don't know, man. Uh, so they did a tabulation of all the wallets that held XRP um, back last December 12th. And uh, nothing's nothing's come about. They said that they're tabulating all that and they will do a Spark token airdrop because Spark token is basically Flare is Spark. Flare is the project, Spark is the token. And apparently it will allow smart contract capability on XRP or whatnot. I don't know. Um, but uh yeah, and nothing's ever really come about from that so far. Um, I've tried to, to look some stuff up, and I still can't get any clear answers um, from that community about that. So if you know anything, let me know. Um, Solana, 156.07, uh, up 15.4%. Polkadot, uh, up 21.7%, up 11.4% in the past 24 hours. Wow, that's pretty good. I like Polkadot, you know? Um, I like the concept. I like the project. There's a lot of stuff going on with Polkadot. And all the projects surrounding it. Um, and to me, Polkadot's kind of like blockchain 3.0. It's very interoperable, very fast, very scalable. Um, a lot of stuff going on. Uh, USDC, it's a stable coin, not ninth place. The Doge, 24 cents. How it's in the top 10, I still have no idea. Um, she, Terra, 44.91, up 6.5%. Terra's turned out to be pretty solid. Um, I just thought it was going to be kind of one of those geolocal type of projects because it's based in Korea and has a high Korea fandom rate. Um, but it's actually been a very practical and great um, DeFi opportunity with some of the projects built using Terra. Um, and so, yeah, um, it's definitely something that you might want to look into, I think. Um, yeah, again, like not financial advice, but, you know. Um, so Shiba Inu up to 12th place. Now... Um, I don't know, is Shiba Inu, Inu on Robin Hood yet? Um, Robin the Hood? Because uh, Shiba Inu and Dogecoin, I mean, it's it's a meme coin. It has no use, you know? And all these people, like I told you yesterday, I had this person in my neighborhood at this neighborhood gathering we went to a few months ago. He's like, yeah, yeah, but 150,000 Shiba Inu tokens, maybe it'll moon one day. You're into crypto, right? <laughs> I'm like, not the same type of crypto you're into, but good luck man um shiba inu is like buying a lottery ticket you know yeah there might be a chance you could make money off of it you know and uh it just doesn't do anything for the space it doesn't do anything for society um it's just a lottery token you know <laughs> um i don't know you know it's maybe it's bringing people into crypto to branch out into some other stuff i try to find the positive lining but uh that's just me you know like People are like, yeah, easy for you to say, yeah, yeah, it's have fun staying poor. I'm up 54.6% in the past 24 hours. Yeah, I'm, all right, okay, man, good. I mean, that's, that's all right, <laughs> you know, like, seriously, like, hopefully that helps you pay your bills and stuff like that, and you cash out at this point. Um, But, uh, yeah, you know, I just, I... I literally am in it for the tech. Like, I think the tech is cool. You know, it's a web 3.0. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's where all this stuff is going. And, uh, you know, Bitcoin's a, a store of value. And Ethereum, I believe, uh, it brings in, ushers in DeFi and every, all the world of possibilities that NFTs are bringing to the space. And NFTs aren't just about art and JPEGs. You know, it's about tokenization of basically everything. And, uh, it's it's insane the capabilities and things we can do with with nfts and i covered this project a while ago um let's see if i can find it alethea nft um you want to combine nfts with ai you know like seriously um you can literally uh keep your your loved one alive 
<laughs> in the form of an NFT and a GPT three powered NFT. Um, what's going on? Coming soon. Uh, are they doing a new website? What, what, what's going on here? Um, let me go back to this search. Okay, so it's in two hours. And four, I'm gonna have to just keep this on my desktop at work and see what's going on. Uh, so, uh, all right. So, <clears throat> um, we'll look at this article here. Um, Elithia raises 16 million dollars in private token sale for intelligent NFTs for the metaverse. It's basically AI NFTs. They're unique and they're individual. You know. And um, AI, Elithia AI, creator of the intelligent NFTs or INFTs, has raised sixteen million in a private and restricted token sale to a game of group of game and crypto developers. The company is creating what it considers to be the underlying AI infrastructure or INFTs or intelligent non fungible tokens path to them on the path to the metaverse. The the universe of virtual worlds are all interconnected, like in novels such as Snow Crash and Ready Player One. Anyway, you can create. An NFT that has AI capabilities and say you want to put in some characteristics of somebody you love and that they've died and uh, you can create basically an NFT that will interact with you. And if you've seen the video of that GPT-3 AI person talking to its creator and there's, you know, th th this AI is saying, I know that I exist and I, you know, and is giving these logical um, emotion based answers and even it says that it can lie and stuff like that. It's just insane, the capabilities of this GPT-3 um, AI person thing. And, um, uh, so in OpenAI's J Foundation GPT-3 technology, which is a learning AI that um, shapes natural language responses to queries. And whenever we'll find, I've gone through it before on this show, but if you can find demos of GPT-3 AI, that it just blows your mind and it's a little scary, man. You know, um, just t they're t talking about how humans will become like pets in a way. And this is the AI talking like <laughs> it's just, ew, it just gives me a chill in my spine um, anyway. OK, so uh, I, I didn't mean to digress on all this stuff, but I mean, I was just talking about all the cool stuff that's happening in the crypto space and the NFT world and Web 3.0 technology and the, the, the fusion of finances and the Internet uh, through MetaMask wallets in your browser and stuff like that. And then you have people over here being like, oh, you, you, you heard of the Shiba Inu token? I might get rich one day. <laughs> all right, man. You do it, dude. Um, all right. Uh, so uh, let's go over here. I've been looking at stable coins and uh, um, I spent 13 minutes talking about that stuff. Jeez. All right. Um, I've been talking about stable coins and I talked about Rye um, in, as, as a floating stable coin. And because uh, other stable coins, and I've fact, go back two episodes before to kind of get the foundation of, of stable coins and uh, private versus um, central banks and um, how stable coins are most stable coins. Uh, there's an assumption that stable coins have to be pegged to something, whether it be the dollar, whether it be the gold or whatever, but that's a pegged coin. It's not necessarily a stable coin. So Rye argues that it is um, one of the first actual stable coins now there's other stable coins too there's um ohm a ohm and that's part of the olympus dow and i want to talk about olympus dow and then there's the float project as well and i want to talk about that at some point i'll probably end up talking about olympus dow tomorrow um so is rye a stable coin yes rye is actually one of the first stable coins most people call stable what most people call stable coins today are actually pegged coins pegged coins are oscillating around a specific value usually pegged, uh, I'll do light blue, one-to-one -to, -one to fiat, such as US dollar and euro, etc. Rye, on the other hand, is not pegged to anything. The system behind Rye only cares about the market price getting as close as possible to the redemption price. The redemption price will almost always float, thus it won't be pegged, um, in order to compel system participants to bring the market price towards it. Um, is Rice a rebase token? No, the protocol doesn't change the amount of tokens it has. Rather, it changes the target price that the protocol wants Rye to have on exchanges. So, um, yeah, Rye, in a way, um, to put it short, it acts kind of like a spring mechanism. Um, whenever you have high market volatility, you have, so if it's backed by ETH, 
and then if ETH shoots through the roof, then Rai will kind of act as, as a dampening effect. It'll follow a little bit, but it's it's been dampered. Uh, think about it like shock absorbers on a car. And I used to have this 1984 Lincoln Town car that was copper. That used was my grandma's before that. And that thing was like a floating, a driving couch, you know. Like, and I put Mexican blankets on the interior, you know. And uh, uh, um, yeah, uh, that thing was rad. But, you know, you would cruise down the freeway. And sometimes you have these dips in the freeway. Well, you know, in a, in a truck or something like that that I had afterwards, it'd be like, you know, and it'd, been, it'd just toss you all over the place. But in that floating couch, 1984 Lincoln Town Car, that, that yeah, you, know, you hit those bumps and it's just kind of like you're like yeah, just riding, you know. And so, even though the road was completely volatile, my ride was not, you know. And uh, yeah, I felt some movement, you know. But um, that's that's basically what Rye does. Rye is an ETH backed stablecoin with a managed float regime. Um, the Rye USD exchange rate is determined by supply and demand, while the protocol that issues ride tries to stabilize the price by constantly de or revaluing it to orange the supply and demand mechanic plays out between two parties the safe users the people that lock their funds in the safe the ethereum they generate rye with the eth and then the rye holders those who speculate on or use rye and other protocols or apps uh, compared to protocols that try to defend a fixed exchange rate between their native stable asset pegged coin and fiat, uh, DAI US dollar, synthetic US dollar, US dollar, um, RISE monetary policy offers a couple of advantages. So it offers flexibility. The protocol can devalue or revalue RISE in response to changes in the RISE marketplace. This process transfers value between the, the safe users and the people who have locked up their ETH in the safe and RISE holders and incentivizes both parties to bring the market price back to a chosen a target chosen by the protocol. The mechanism is similar to countries devaluing or revaluing the current currencies in order to combat a trade imbalance. The trade imbalance in Rise case happens between uh, Rye and safe users. Um, and then discretion, it, it brings flexibility and discretion. Um, the protocol itself is free to change the target exchange rate to its own advantage. It can attract or repel capital when it wants. So in a way, um, it can go into a negative interest rate in order to uh, and it, it automatically devalue the token in order to correct it. So why would I hold Rye when the system devalues the token? And say, this is exactly what the system wants you to ask yourself when it charges a negative redemption rate. Um, the system is trying to incentivize Rye holders and to sell and bring the market price down and, and close to the redemption price. Okay, so... I love a good white paper, you know, um, I, uh, yeah, I'm a nerd like that. So let's go look at the white paper over here. Let me find this window. Ta -da, ta -da, ta -da, ta -da. There it is, the white paper. All right. So um, let me pull this up. Okay. So Rye, um, money is one of the most powerful coordination mechanisms humanity leverages in order to thrive. The privilege of managing money uh, the, the privilege of man managing the money supply has historically been kept, kept in the hands of a sovereign leadership and financial elite while being imposed upon an unwitting general public. Wow, this has a, um, it rings of Way Dies Be Money intro. <laughs> it sounds uh, very eerily similar. Maybe they were inspired by it. I don't know. Um, but, you know, it's cool. I like Way Die and I like Be Money. So, where Bitcoin has demonstrated the potential for a grassroots protest to manifest a store of value commodity asset, Ethereum gives us a platform to build asset-backed asset synthetic instruments that can be protected from volatility and used as collateral or pegged as a reference price and used as a medium of exchange for daily transactions, all enforced by the same principles of decentralized consensus. Okay, so yeah, Bitcoin store value commodity asset yes bitcoin has brought us that and it's done it very well um now people maxis will argue that bitcoin is also going to be able to do everything that ethereum does and uh, there are some developments as uh, some recent developments that are starting to allow some of that stuff and it's working fairly well although adoption has not really uh jumped on ethereum has already established itself um as as the de facto uh platform for DeFi. so it's ethereum gives us uh a platform to build asset-based 
asset-backed synthetic instruments that can be protected from volatility and used as collateral or pegged to a reference price and used as a medium of exchange for daily transactions, all enforced by the same principles of decentralized consensus that Bitcoin brings us. So Ethereum is DeFi. That's uh, derivatives, synthetics. A lot of that is decentralized finance. So permission access, permissionless access to Bitcoin for storing wealth and properly decentralized synthetic instruments on Ethereum will lay the foundation for the upcoming financial revolution. So it's not going to be Bitcoin or Ethereum, Maxis. It's going to be Bitcoin and Ethereum. So Bitcoin will store the wealth and properly decentralized synthetic instruments on Ethereum will lay the foundation for the upcoming financial revolution. Properly decentralized, because there's a lot of crap on Ethereum. I, I'd, I'd be the first to admit, you know, I'm not an Ethereum maxi. There is a lot of crap out there, you know, a lot of really dumb ERC-20 tokens as well. But there's a lot of really good ones as well and a lot of very decentralized ones. Okay, so... Um, so uh, Ethereum will lay the foundations for the upcoming financial relation uh, revolution, providing those at the fringes of the modern financial system the means to coordinate around building the new one. So providing those at the fringes. So that's the, the key concept here is uh, it, everything that I'm doing is I'm trying to stay on the fringes. I'm trying to stay where the innovation happens because people say that blockchain will be in a way could be our worst dystopian nightmare. And that is true with the implementation of implementation of the CBDC token telling us, you know, how much money we'll get, where we can spend it, how fast we can spend it, you know, according to our social credit score, medical information, what, you know, but if you stay on the innovation and on the fringe to where we're at the place where the regulatory bodies don't know what to do with, or don't know quite understand the technology that's happening, then you can find your freedom right there in that gray area. Um, anyway, in this paper, they say we introduce a framework for building reflex index indexes, a new asset type, which will help other synthetics flourish and will establish a key building block for the entire decentralized finance industry. All right. So a, a reflex index purpose is not to maintain a specific peg like USDC or DAI or any other stable coin, which is, I want to correctly say, as pegged coin. Uh, but to damp so it's not to maintain a specific peg a, a reflex index it's to dampen the volatility of its collateral to be a shock absorber indexes allow anyone to gain exposure to the cryptocurrency market without the same scale of risk as holding crypto assets we believe rye our first reflex index will have immediate utility for other teams issuing synthetics on ethereum um, example given maker dow's multi-collateral die um, that it's not just um, Ethereum is, uh, that's backed in MakerDAO to produce DAI, it's USDC and other assets. And then UMA is another one that's doing this. Synthetics, that was actually, Synthetics was the first DeFi platform I ever used. And that was, a, that one's a bugaboo to start with for sure. But uh, I learned how to use DeFi on Synthetics. Not too many people can say that, I don't think. Anyway, uh, because I didn't even know what a derivative was at that point. Um, so, uh, so. Um, yeah, we believe Rye, our first reflex flex index, will have immediate utility for other teams issuing synthetics on Ethereum uh, because it gives their systems a lower exposure to volatile assets such as Ethereum and offers users more time to exit their positions in case of a significant market shift. So if you have your uh, Ethereum locked up in some of these collateral, as collateral in some of these, and the Ethereum decides to tank or it decides to shoot through the roof, um, that creates a lot of volatility in there and unpredictability. And when you're working with stuff like derivatives and stuff like that, you don't want unpredictability and your pegged asset and, and your locked up asset. Um, so in order to understand reflex indexes, um, we can compare the behavior of the redemption price to that of a stable coins price. The redemption price is the value of one debt unit uh, or coin in the system. It is meant to be used only as an internal accounting tool and is different from the market price, the value that the market um, is trading the coin at. In the case of fiat-backed stable coins such as USDC, um, the system operators declare that anyone can redeem one coin for one dollar and thus the redemption price for these coins is always one. When I say fiat-backed, it means government-issued currency. That's fiat currency, all right, just so you know. I don't want to assume that everybody knows all this this, this jargon here. Is the that's yeah, what scares a lot of people away from crypto. So anyway, in the case of fiat box back stable coins such as USDC, the system operators declare that anyone can redeem one coin for one US dollar, and thus the redemption price for these coins is always one. There are also cases of crypto backed stable coins such as MakerDAO's multi collateral die, 
uh, where the system targets a fixed peg of one US dollar and thus the redemption price is also fixed at one. So MakerDAO uses a bunch of other different types of collateral, but it's always trying to target one dollar as the value of that. So they will you know, adjust accordingly to always try to fit one dollar. Um, and uh, so in a way, people claim that MakerDAO's die is not decentralized as they claim they are because they are always have their their compass pointed towards the dollar um so and as the dollar becomes more unstable because of all this money printer go burr and all this uh you know huge infrastructure trillion dollar packages and stuff like that completely devaluing it it's becoming more and more of an issue at hand okay in most cases there will be a difference between the market price of a stable coin and its redemption prices these scenarios create arbitrage opportunities where traders will create coins will create more coins if the market price is higher than redemption and they will redeem their stable coins for collateral um, in case the market price is lower than the redemption price. Reflex indexes are similar to stable coins because they also have a redemption price that the system targets. But the main difference in their case is that the redemption will not remain fixed, but is designed to change while being influenced by market forces. Again, shock absorbers on the 1984 Lincoln Town Car. Okay. So we can go through the design philosophy, but I kind of need to move on. I want to talk about control theory, which is basically monetary cruise control. Um, so this is kind of what reflex indexes and what uh, Rye relies on. And this is kind of the mechanics behind it is control theory. Okay. One common control system that most people are familiar with is the shower. All right. So when someone starts a shower, they have a desired water temperature in mind which in control theory is called the reference set point. The person acting as the controller continuously measures the water flow temperature, which is called the system output, and modifies the speed at which they turn the shower's knob based on the deviation or error um, between the desired and current temperature. The speed at which the knob is turned is called the system input. The objective is to turn the knob fast enough to reach the set reference set point quickly but not so fast that the temperature overshoots. If the system shocks where the water flow sudden temperature suddenly changed, a person should be able to maintain the current temperature by knowing how fast to turn the knob in response to the disturbance. So have you ever been like in a hotel shower or is somebody, you know, a friend's house shower or in a really old house and then you, you just slightly turn the heat, you know, and then suddenly it's like scalding hot and you're standing there naked and you're like, ah, you got sh shampoo all over your head and you're just like, oh. And then just because you turn that dial of hair, yeah, well, that doesn't have really good control theory on that uh, that knob and that handle. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it's all about the control theory. And so so is Rye in relation um, to Ethereum and to, in order to create that proper dampening effect. So the scientific discipline of maintaining stability in dynamic systems is also called control theory. It's an entire discipline of science is, 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 is control theory. Okay, and it's found a broad application in cruise, cruise control for cars, flight navigation, chemical reactors, robotic arms, and in industrial processes of all kinds. The Bitcoin difficulty adjustment algorithm, which maintains a 10-minute average block time, despite a variable hash rate is, a, is, a, is an example of a mission critical control system. So Bitcoin, yeah, adjusting the difficulty of, of, um, the, of the, the hash algorithm, you know, um, th that maintains that every 10 minute block time, like clockwork, you know, um, if it becomes too easy, then the, 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 the block time speeds up. Yeah. If it becomes too hard, it gets too slow. So yeah, it has an algorithmic controller on there. In most modern control systems, an algorithmic controller is typically embedded in the process and is given control over a system's input, a uh, car's gas pedal, right, for example, in order to automatically update it based on deviations between the system output, a car's speed, and the set point, the cruise control. So if you see this graph here, you have the reference, uh, you have the measured controller, the controller, the system input, any type of variables, the system, and then there's the system output, you have the sensor here, and then it... Um, it goes back and it, it will go back and make adjustments as needed um, based on the system input. So the most common type of algorithmic controller is the PID controller. Over 95% of industrial applications in a wide range of biological systems employ elements of PID. 
Um, so yeah, the PID uses a mathematical formula with three parts to determine its output. So the controller output, whatever happens, you know, out, whatever's coming out of that, um, it depends on three things, the proportional term, the integral term, and the derivative term. The proportional term is the part of controller of the controller that's directly proportional to the deviation. If the deviation is large and positive, the cruise control speed set point is far higher than the car's current speed, the proportional response will be large and positive. It, basically, the gas pedal will hit the floor. Um, so if, if you're going 45 and the cruise control set at 65, you will get a little push back in your chair. Um, so that's the proportional term. So the second um, thing that affects the controller output is the integral term. It's the part of the controller which takes into account how long a deviation has persisted. So there's how much and then how long now. Um, it's determined by taking the integral of the deviation over time and is primarily used to eliminate steady state error. Um, it accumulates in order to respond to small, albeit persistent deviations from the set point. So an example, uh, the cruise control set point has been one mile higher than the car's speed for a few minutes. It's okay, so just a tiny little tweak. Yeah, right in there. Okay, so, and then the third one that um, affects the controller output is the derivative term. So we have proportional term, integral term, and then now derivative term. So let me highlight that. That's the part of the controller which takes into account how fast the deviation is growing or shrinking and is determined by taking the derivative of the deviation and serves to uh, accelerate the controller response when the deviation is growing. Example given speed up if the cruise control set point is higher than the car's speed and the car starts to slow down. Uh, yeah, basically how fast the change happens. It also helps to reduce overshoot by decelerating the controller's response when the deviation is shrinking. Ease up on the gas as the car's speed starts to approach the cruise control set point. So, you know, like we said before, you know, if the cruise control is set at 65 and we're going 45, you may see an initial effect of floor in the gas, but then once it gets closer, that starts to ease off slowly instead of being like, oh, and just like, you know, hitting the brakes automatically or whatever, you know, it, it, it eases into it. Um, if you do animation or anything, there's the easy ease, easy out, ease in, ease out tools in which it kind of it, it it brings it up real quickly and then slows down right when it gets to the point where it needs to be. And that's kind of what Rye and the reflexor index is doing. It's creating that cushion that the shock absorber has. It might immediately take off and try to adjust to it, but once it gets closer to its point, it'll slow down. Um, the combination of these three parts, which can be independently tuned, gives PID controllers great flexibility at managing a wide variety of control system applications. PID controllers work best in systems that allow some degree of lag in the response time, as well as the possibility of overshoot and oscillation around the set point at the, as the system attempts to stabilize itself. Reflex index systems like RAI are well suited um, for this type of scenario where their redemption prices can be changed by PID controllers. Um, so yeah, you can control each one of those things um, to your fancy, you know, uh, PID fancy, yeah, <laughs> make a paper called PID where you can adjust each little characteristic of that. More generally, it has been discovered that many of the current central bank mon monetary policy rules, e.g. the Taylor rule, I don't know what that is, are actually the approximation of PID controllers. Huh, okay, so the central bank currency um, interesting. Central bank monetary policies are run by PID controllers. Huh? Interesting. <laughs> All right. Um, redemption rate feedback mechanism. All right. So and then they go into all these, you know, how debt is repriced and it kind of uses this PID type of model to show, you know, on these graphs. And you can go through and, and look at some of the details of this. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm not going to bog you down with all those details. I'm actually 35 minutes. I've spent the first 13 min minutes ranting about Shiba Inu token, and I apologize for that. Um, but yeah, that's my show today. Um, yeah. I just wanted to kind of go over some of the more um, in-depth stuff in the Rye White Paper. Um, you, you can go in the, uh, the Reflexor app here, and you can look at some of these things. You can stake here, and you'll earn the Flex token. Um, and I didn't even get into Flex. Um, and then look at some of these incentives right here. Um, it's You can work with Uniswap. Um, yeah, there's liquidity pools here, and you can get some pretty healthy API APR right here. Um, on Aave, you can uh, you know um, get some healthy APR by um, uh, locking up Rye. So 
you know, you can borrow rye on Ave. That's what I meant. Um, and uh, you can get some healthy APR. It's an infuse and idle. So yeah, they're partnered up with some other types of things. There's some things you can do with the rye token right now. So um, yeah, uh, it's just working on Ethereum layer one's kind of expensive for an average working schlep like me. So I don't really do much on Ethereum layer one, but if you have that type of money, yep have fun um but uh, i'm gonna be going over here to arbitrum and matic don't mind me over here i'm gonna go where it's cheap okay all right so all right oh shoot uh, you didn't get to see that okay hold on let me um close this uh window capture too okay so yeah right here uniswap uh flex uh, the, all these liquidity pools and you can lock um lock up on ave and borrow rye um so yeah yeah, a lot of things you can do uh, with it, and uh, my reggae music is over. Okay, I gotta get out of here. I gotta go to work. It's it's yeah, it's it's that time. All right. So I will talk to you guys tomorrow, and uh, maybe we'll be talking about Olympus Dow tomorrow. All right. So later.